Well, let's let's face it. I mean, look at big tech, right? Big tech basically has benefited from the fact, Brian, that we can't go out, right? I'm sure there's been way more Amazon orders now that we can't go uh, and do things like we normally do. So I think, you know, tech specifically, and we know at this point, tech is 23% of the S&P. It's not the S&P 500 anymore, Brian. It's the S&P 5. <laughs> so, um, you know, you're seeing really five stocks drive that entire index. But, and I think a lot of that has been fundamentals up until a point, but now you're getting to a point where, like Apple, for example, is literally at its 700 billion to its market cap this year. Now, I think Apple's a great company, but there's not anything that's fundamentally changed in their business, I would say at this point, that would justify that they add another 700 billion to their market cap. Yeah, I mean, you're right in the market about the S&P 5, and we've talked about this idea of market structure for a long time on this program, Ryan, more than a year, but it hasn't seemed to matter. Do you think there will be a day, and if so, when, that it will matter? Yeah, I think there will. I think we talked about this before. You know, I'm not bold enough to tell you exactly when that day is, but if you look at every historical measure right now, and if you look at the top stocks in the S&P 500, they now trade close to 50 times forward earnings. Historically, that's extremely expensive, and it's reminiscent of what you saw back in 99, 2000. But then, Brian, if you start looking at the, the cheapest stocks in the S&P 500, it's more like 11 times forward earnings. So when you start to slice and dice the market, you know, what I start to see here is it's really the tale of two markets. You've got big tech where valuation expansion just keeps happening. It's not really on profits growing. Uh, then you have the rest of the market, which is relatively cheap here. And a lot of the rest of the market is dependent on the economy reopening. And if you start looking at the economic data, well, it is getting better and better. You know, if you look at yesterday, we had, uh, you know, we, we look at the unemployment numbers. You start looking at those jobless claims. They came in under a million claims for the first time. Like, that's great news. You start looking at those PMIs for manufacturing service services. They're over 50. They're an expansion again. Um, you start looking at those TSA numbers, people going to the airport, people are flying more. So I think the underlying economy, like make no mistake, is getting better and better. And that's extremely bullish for the overall market. I think you just got to be careful here that you're not just putting all your money on tech. Well, Ryan, it's, I mean, it's like going from a D minus to a D plus. I mean, you look at the TSA numbers. Yeah, they're over 800,000, but they're still down 70 percent. So many metrics are still so far below where they were, although a lot of Americans, if D.C. can make a deal, which right now they have not, but if they can make a deal... Americans will be getting, a lot of Americans will be getting another, another stimulus check. How do you balance that out? And why does it even matter to the stock market, which, let's be frank, let's be honest, hasn't really seemed to care what the economy is doing. The stock market is not the economy. Yes, exactly. And I think that's the biggest mistake investors make. And they made that mistake back in 08, 09. I remember that when the news was terrible for a long time, but the market kept going higher and higher. And like you said, I was back on your show back in April, Brian, when you had your living room as your background, you might remember, um, you know, I, I you saw <laughs> the same dynamics at play, right? The news was terrible, but the market's always forward looking. And the market kind of predicted this correctly because the economic data has gotten better and all the market cares about are things getting worse, or are they getting better? And they're clearly getting better. But the other component to that is earnings, right? The market's a slave to earnings. And clearly, Wall Street's been completely incorrect on earnings. I mean, we've seen over 80% beat on S&P 500 earnings so far. And it's not by a small margin, Brian. It's by 20%. It's the biggest margin miss ever. So clearly, companies are managing their balance sheets way better than Wall Street anticipated. And that's another reason why the market keeps driving higher here.